Ali made it to my house in record time and figured out immediately why it was so dark and weird outside. Apparently, the Unseelies outsmarted us a bit. They put up a wide glamour spell around the entire freaking house! It concealed what was going on, making it easy for them to nab Spencer without anyone noticing. We were assuming Ewan managed to see through it when he heard me yelling. Ah, uh, okay. Well, now that explains the whole Danny and Elliot thing, so... Thanks. I was glad Allie hadn't come along. I felt like the more people we had at this point, the more likely we were going to be able to get Spencer and Ewan back. Oh, come alone. I'm like, can come along? Good job, eyes and brain. I was glad Allie hadn't come alone. So that we can get Spencer and Ewan back. It didn't take long to update everyone. We just needed to figure out what to do next. How do we get them back? I suspect they're not going to just let us in at this point. You think? I mean, they locked me out of that damn fairy ring already. We should have gotten rid of it as soon as Allie noticed something weird about it. At this point, I might actually have to try to tear down that hill with my bare hands. If that's what it took to get them back, I didn't even care. Brenna snorted softly from her place by one of the doors. I still didn't like her, but I was relieved she had come regardless. We needed her knowledge of fairy. Not to mention her nephew is in trouble. <laughs> there are so many gates opening up this time of year. I don't know why you think you need to use the same one they did. We don't exactly have much assurance they haven't shut the others. Oh, there's one that operates outside the control of the Unseelie. One they can't close, even if they want to. That's true. I do know there's one that opens up in different places every year. Is that the one you mean? You're so clever, Ali. That doesn't sound like a compliment somehow. But we don't know where it is. Brenna shot a glance my way. Oh, I think little Nora might have a good idea. The bridge! It's all coming together. After all, she was trying to get to it for weeks now. That... The bridge! She was talking about the bridge! That's why I've been going down there at night? That had to be it! She's right. I think I may know where it is. Alright. Here we go. Chapter 10, Beneath the Fairy Hill. Yeah, there's definitely a gate under there. It's probably been opening off and on for the last couple of weeks. I imagine that's why I kept feeling drawn to this spot. Most likely. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go in! Danny grabbed my arm, pulling me back before I could head down there. Nora, wait. Let go! We don't have time to wait! Nora, we can't just go running in there without some kind of plan. Oh, yes we can. Not to be super blunt here, but the last time you did that, you ended up tangled in a changeling contract. And I'll get myself tangled in a hundred more if it means getting Spencer back. Well, that's kind of defeating the purpose. I want a plan that gets everyone back safely. That's why we have Brenna. Even if we couldn't entirely trust her, I could at least believe she hated the Unseelies. And they had her nephew, one she'd gone into exile to protect. Just try to keep up. We will. Brenna flashed me a slight grin as she passed me. You're brave for a whiny human who got herself tangled in a changeling contract. Brave. Stupid. And quite entertaining. I'm looking forward to seeing how this ends. That... I couldn't tell if it was a compliment or not, but I shot Allie an annoyed look and followed her down anyway. Oh, it's uh, very magical now. My goodness. I half climbed and half slid down the embankment toward the opening under the bridge. It was strange, but when I looked underneath, it felt like the air was... colder. I could see the other side, but it just felt... off. I thought I could hear whispering voices rustling out toward us. If a dragon or troll shows up from the other side of this thing, Spencer and Ewan are on their own. But nothing emerged, and instead I took a deep breath, and without looking back, 
stepped forward and tumbled into the darkness. I imagine stepping through that gate was similar to what it must have felt like for Alice to topple down that rabbit hole. I was spiraling downward through a tunnel, except it felt like my feet went over my head so many times I couldn't tell what was up or down anymore. But there were no caterpillars. Instead, after what felt like a weirdly long time, I fell face first in a pile of wet, rotten leaves, just as if I tripped or something. I lay stunned for a split second before I jumped up and looked around. Well, we've made it. There was... no one else nearby. But I appeared to be in a forest? A forest of soft, glowing lights that felt... uncomfortably familiar. It was strange because there was no sky overhead. If I looked up, it was just yawning bla black. There was a slight echo, the sound of trickling water. Through the trees, though, it almost felt like there were stone walls lingering back there. As if I was really in a giant cavern. There were faint singing voices as well. The eerie, haunting sort. Not the sort that made you feel safe and comfortable. Definitely had an otherworldly feel that made me want to simultaneously go home and pinch myself to make sure I wasn't dreaming. Is this where I insert a clever quip about Kansas? There was a soft thump behind me and I whirled around. And Allie was picking herself up out of the leaves, pulling them from her hair one by one. I could have done without that fall. It wasn't that bad. Maybe for you. I held out a hand to help her stand. She looked around apprehensively. I wasn't really expecting this. Me either, but I guess I should have been. Familiar? Annoyingly so. Oh, Drayson's here too. I just saw a floof of pink sticking up out of the leaves, and in spite of the situation, I had to bite back a laugh. I crouched down and helped Drayson sit up, picking the leaves out of his hair. You okay? Yeah, that was... strange. He looked around with great interest. There wasn't a trace of fear on his face, just frank curiosity as he studied the trees and lights. It's pretty. I'd grant him that, but that didn't mean I didn't want to go home. Shelly wasn't far behind either, and it didn't take us long to get her up and situated as well. Danny landed with a surprising amount of grace compared to the rest of us. I was a little jealous considering it was cats that were supposed to be able to land on their feet, not dogs. Or, well, werewolves. He probably wouldn't be thrilled at being called a dog. Elliot face planted into the leaves in a decidedly Elliot fashion. That looks like it hurt. I didn't see Brenna arrive, and she didn't fall on the leaves. She was just there, hanging back at the edge of the shadows, watching us get our bearings. I wondered how she got in at all, considering she'd been exiled. But it might have just been because she came through a gate the Unseelies didn't control. I let out a long, shaky breath. I guess it's time to go. I didn't even know how we were going to get out of this place once we got Spencer and Ewan back. That was a bridge we'd have to cross when we got to it, but I was going to have to stay on my toes if I wanted to outsmart these guys this time around. Because with fairies, I felt like it always came down to outsmarting them rather than overpowering them. We walked quietly for some time, and honestly, I had no idea where we were going. Our footsteps were strangely echoey, heightening the feeling we were actually in a massive cave, despite the trees around us. There was a really, really strong feeling of being watched, though I couldn't see anyone or anything nearby. The silence was... tense. And unnerving. Well, this is basically like the worst haunted house ever. I mean, there's not even one super fake skeleton. Not to mention the decided lack of cobwebs. Allie shot me a slightly amused look. Yeah, I was just thinking the ambience is pretty good. But the decorator was really sleeping on the job. Spent all the budget on those stupid lights. No kidding. Reminds me of Mr. McClanahan's haunted house last year. Allie just laughed quietly. <laughs> oh man, I forgot about that. What happened? 
I felt like we were just talking to ignore the reality of the situation, but it was better than walking in silence. Oh, it was so bad. He kind of painted a bunch of weird posters and stuff. And he just had a couple of speakers up playing spooky sound effects. A complete F for effort. The only scary thing about it was the headache you had by the end. And how long it took to get through. <laughs> I laughed quietly. Given what you deal with on a daily basis, I'm surprised you even bothered to go. They can be fun if you don't take them seriously. Yet there's at least some thought put into them. She stopped suddenly, frowning as she squinted up ahead. What is that? Looks like the path ahead is closing! Can we run for it? Try to make it through? No, it's too late! We just watched in dismay as shadows streaked across the path, weaving a wall to block the way. What the hell is that? Looks like a barrier. Those slimy little cheaters. I looked around helplessly. We were completely walled in. What now? <laughs> Hold! Everything! Nobody move! Who are you? Whoa! <laughs> Sir, uh... Can I get a name, please? <laughs> um... Huh. Okay. Your way seems to be blocked. What a pity. I took a stumbling step back as a strange figure stepped from the shadows into the faint light. A fairy, surely, but... The face. The build. Danny. I... Ri I guess... I can kind of see it, actually. I would not have put that those two together. But now that she said it, I can see it. I mean, it wasn't, of course. But there was a strikely striking resemblance, for sure. I was immediately uneasy. With fairy glamour, it wouldn't have been hard to imitate anyone. I didn't know if they picked a good friend just to throw us off or what. Or maybe it was a jab at me. Because I'd kicked the fake me out of my house and all the way back to fairy. Either way, I didn't like it. The fairy just smiled. Doppelganger. If you want to go on, you must pass me first. Okay. I shot Allie a worried look. Are we supposed to beat him up or something? Why is everything gladiator battles with you? Not everything is a gladiator battle. Besides, I wasn't up for a gladiator battle with even a fake Danny. I have a really great idea. Why don't you just let us pass? Uh-uh, not so fast. I'm not going to let you go for free. That isn't how things work here. I glared at the doppelganger. Then what do you want? Only something very simple. An easy task that won't take long. Task. I shivered. There was something about the doppelganger's smile that suggested this wasn't going to be easy at all. Ready? Excellent. It crossed its arms. I nourish those that would build. The city that founded much and to which all roads lead. What am I? Alright, riddles time. Nourish those that would build a city that founded much. Nourish, okay. What? Oh, is that your answer? No! No, it's not. A riddle? So they were going to make us answer a freaking riddle before we were allowed to pass. That was definitely very fey like but frustrating. I glanced back at the others. We didn't have time for this, but I didn't think we had a choice but to answer. 
nourished those that would build a city that founded much. Hmm. Hold up. Now that I've seen see you two next to each other. Okay, yeah, I, I see it now. Danny stepped forward from the back of the group, crossing his arms as he glared at his creepy fey doppelganger. It was kind of eerie watching them stare each other down. You barely look like me, you know. The fake Danny just lifted an eyebrow and didn't respond. Whatever. I don't know what you're planning, but I know the answer to your riddle. He glanced my way with a slight smile. If you trust me to answer. I breathed a sigh of relief because I hadn't actually been too sure which was the right answer. Please. Of course I do. Capitoline Wolf. Easy. The what now? The wolf that cared for the twins Romulus and Remus before they grew up and founded Rome. There is a famous sculpture of it. Huh. I didn't know that. Oh! What the heck? I should have known that! The fairy definitely did not look happy Danny had so easily gotten the answer. I wasn't totally sure it was going to keep its word. But I would fight my way through if I had to. We solved your riddle. Now let us pass. Very well. I'll allow you to pass as you say, but you have to stay with me. He pointed to Danny as he spoke. What? No, that's not fair. You said we get to pass if we answered. That is not what I said. I said you couldn't pass for free, and you can't. That one can stay, or you all can stay. I'll do it. I'll stay here for now. Tanny, no! It's done, then. No, we can't leave you here! Nora's right! We- Danny grabbed my shoulders as his creepy clone clapped its hands. The shadow wall began to melt. Nora, I'll be fine. I can look after myself. Go and get Spencer and Ewan back. Go. I grabbed his arm as the fairy tried to pull me away. No! Don't, Don't be, be so dramatic. dramatic. If you, you achieve, achieve your goal, goal you'll all, all be released, released, you know. Uh, oh? He shrugged as if it would be obvious, or should be obvious, but he didn't exactly look trustworthy. Sorry, Danny. How could I believe something like that anyway? They were liars, kidnappers. We don't have much use for a werewolf down here anyway. That was surprisingly pragmatic for a fairy, but still. Nora, just hurry up and get the others back. I didn't want to leave him. Damn it! I shot one last look his way before I squeezed my eyes shut, hurried down the tunnel, deeper beneath the hill. The others followed more slowly, but they finally caught up and we reluctantly left Danny behind. I'm sad Elliot didn't have a goodbye with Danny, just in case. I don't remember it being this hard last time. Then again, my memories of last time were still a bit vague. And I'd been alone. I don't think I had to answer riddles. In any case, we continued on silently this time. Maybe the seriousness was finally hitting us. Or maybe the creep factor was finally getting to us. Either way, we just walked in anxious silence, jumping at any movement or flux of the shadows. An unexplainable breeze rustled the leaves above us, letting them rain down on our heads. Wait, that wasn't a breeze. Something was running through the trees above us, bouncing loose the leaves. There was a playful giggle, one of the first outward signs of those watchful eyes I could feel all around us. So annoying. I glared up into the leaves, but only managed to end up with a cod of moss to the face. Hey! You're not children. Don't throw dirt. Stupid fairies. Just ignore them. Keep your focus. They're trying to rile us up. Break our concentration. Don't let them. She's right. Just keep going. Easier said than done. I wasn't sure how far we walked, but I wasn't surprised when the path closed off again and the shadows reappeared, knitting together a tight pitch black wall that stopped us from moving on. 
Okay, well, this time I can see a resemblance. Hmm. So that's what Drayson would look like with the horn and black hair. Gotta say, he's pretty ripped. Noted. There was a mirthless laugh and another fairy stepped out of the wall. I recognize this one instantly. It was a poor mimic of Drayson. Evil fairy Drayson. Every ounce of sweetness and innocence was gone, replaced by a creepy glare. It was still disconcerting, and I hated the way it was smirking at us as if it could sense my discomfort. I crossed my arms over my chest, glaring as I tried to calm my thundering heart. You're not even trying now, are you? Fairy Drayson just chuckled in response. <laughs> You're not getting past me. Not until you play the game. Ugh. Fairies and their games. We were scared and worried about finding people we loved, and they were playing games like none of it mattered at all. I really wanted to just throttle him with his own stupid hair. It should be a breeze, little lost changeling. After all, you love words, don't you? Don't act like you know anything about me. And stop calling me that. I have a name. Very well, little Nora. You'll answer my question if you want to pass, won't you? My fingers curled into fists at the sound of him using my name, and I almost regretted mentioning it. I already hated how familiar they all acted by calling me Little Changeling, as if they all knew exactly who I was. Hearing him use my name was even worse. They may have held onto my body for nearly a decade, which was super creepy to think about, thank you very much, but they didn't know me or anything about me. Nothing at all. Don't get so wound up, little Nora. This one should be easy as pie for someone like you. Then again, the best pies aren't really all that easy to make, are they? Just get on with it. A white-horned beast, noble and true. A feline king, brave, through and through. Battles and bouts both inside and around. And yet thrice again battle all through town. Tell me. What were these two fighting for? A white-horned beast and a feline king? Isn't that from Alice Through the Looking Glass? They were fighting for, um... A, like, the crown, basically. Like, the right to wear the... Like, who's gonna be king? Drayson had been walking a few steps behind me. He sidled alongside me and took my hand, giving it a gentle squeeze. I love you, Drayson. Leave this to me, okay? He gave me a disarming smile as he cautiously approached the fairy copy. I hoped that maybe... Maybe because unicorns had good relations with the fae, it would be okay this time. But Drayson didn't, uh, answer the riddle or anything. He just raised his arm above his head. And the fairy did the same. Drayson jumped to the side... And the fairy did the same. Drayson reached up and poked the copy in the nose, and the fairy did the same. Um, guys, can we focus here? Oh, sorry, sorry. It's just kind of weird. Like one of those funhouse mirrors where you turn all twisted and ugly when you look at it. <laughs> Allie snorted softly next to me, especially at the incredibly annoyed look on the fairy's face. I don't think Drayson even realized he just insulted the poor thing, which kind of did make it funnier. Still, though, we really didn't have time for this. Can I hear the riddle again? You don't need to. He beamed at me. I know the answer. It's- Wait! Wait! The last time, Danny had to stay behind when we answered the riddle. We should be care- Drayson put a hand to my lips and just smiled gently. In that moment, he seemed strangely older and wiser than usual. Not at all the usual bubblegum-haired dits I was accustomed to. It'll be alright, Nora. Don't worry about me. The important thing is to get our friends back, right? R right Are you sure about this? I'm sure. Just trust me. 
Drazen wasn't the one I was having trouble trusting. These fairies were definitely trying to trip us up. I just didn't want everyone to get dragged down because they'd followed me into this mess. Drazen didn't hesitate in the slightest before answering, though. Hey, I actually got one right. With the other one, I'm really not familiar at all with Roman mythology. Uh, very familiar with Greek, so if you'd asked me a Greek riddle, probably would have done better, but Roman, not so much. So glad Danny had my back there. A crown. The lion and the unicorn were fighting for the crown. Oh, that's what it was referring to? As soon as he said it, I remembered the rhyme as well. The lion and the unicorn were fighting for the crown. The lion beat the unicorn all around the town. His fairy counterpart looked furious, though. He sputtered angrily. No! No, that's, that's not fair. fair! Yeah, welcome to my world. Come on! If it was right, let us through. That's what you promised. Drayson Fairy narrowed his eyes, glaring at us. Don't get full of yourself because you've made it this far. The rest of you can pass, but this one has to stay behind. <sighs> Damn it! Well, we expected that, so it's fine. You go on ahead. Don't worry about me. I need you to go and get my best friend back, okay? Aw, Drayson. Please. I squeezed his hands and nodded, not trusting my voice. I didn't want to have to leave anyone else behind in this place. We'd already lost Danny, and now Drayson. Were they just going to whittle us down? Divide and conquer? Right? I'm like, oh no. Does that mean I get to see fairy versions of everybody, though? I guess not Brenna, because Brenna is a fairy. That'd be weird. But are we going to see, like, Faye Alley, Faye Shelley, and oh my goodness, Faye Elliot. Elliot with white hair, that would be weird. Hmm. Well, we'll see. But I didn't know what else to do. We had to keep going if we wanted to find Ewan and Spencer. Go, please. I swallowed hard as Drayson Fairy raised a hand and waved it at the shadow wall. It melted away as simply as the previous wall. I cast Drayson one last look as I started forward. He just smiled slightly and raised his hand in a little wave. The list of people depending on us to save them was growing. I really, really hoped this turned out okay.